Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing this poinsettia plant in this um, pot. Um, this is from Johanna's Christmas. I shall just zoom out. Oh, wrong way, I'm very sorry. I'll just zoom out and show you which picture it is. It doesn't want to do it very quickly. It's this double page spread with the fire and the Christmas tree. I'm not going to try and zoom out anymore. It doesn't seem to want to play. There we go. We'll bring it back in so that I can colour it for you. So we've got this poinsettia, we've got this pot, so I thought I would just have a little go. Now, I'm gonna start with the um, flowers. I'm gonna grab our red. This is, I'm gonna be using Polychromos pencils today. I'm gonna start with the scarlet red, which is number 118. It's quite hard for you to see in this light, but I'm gonna go over every flower to start with in this colour. Now this is, now I can't decide whether these leaves are supposed to be petals or if they're supposed to be leaves. With the poinsettia, the red petals I always think look really similar to the leaves anyway in their shape and um, that sort of thing. But I'm going to do them as leaves because I think it will give it some contrast to have the red and the green together rather than just a whole load of red. So uh, I'm just giving these a rough colouring to start with. I'm not when I say rough, I'm not trying not to be too messy and I'm trying to keep it even, but I'm not really worrying about shading or anything like that. Just going, getting a layer of colour down while I, uh, as a sort of base. Now, interestingly, some people do this with a, with a pen, with a felt tip pen or a marker um, to uh, start them off and then they shade with pencil over the top which I think could be a really good, useful technique, particularly for people whose hands hurt when they use pencil for a long time. Anyway, there's my basic start, and now I want to darken it up. I'm gonna use this dark red. This is number 225. It's, um, the, it's just called dark red. Um, I will list all the um, pencils as usual in the description, and I'm gonna put it near the center the flower all the way through every flower. I'm going to make them look the same. They probably wouldn't. You look at a plant, not even every petal looks the same, let alone every bloom on the plant, but it makes it a bit easier to keep it the same. And uh, I think sometimes having a sort of, it's not really a symmetry, but a consistent look I can keep it looking quite neat. So we're just doing this to try and give the um, give some interest and um, shadowing on it as if it goes downwards in the middle which I'm not sure if they really do but uh, well, I do it like this anyway now another thing that you can do is to do some dark on the end of each leaf petal sorry and I'm going to do that I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of each one. You see at the moment it looks a little odd but we're going to blend that in in a minute. But just get a little spot of the dark colour. Don't push too hard. Um, you may need to push harder than me. Um, I know there are people that say they can't get down such a dark colour as me and I think it's because I've been colouring for a long time. So I've got that muscle in my hand, I can push, you know, I can I can get colour out more easily. I'm not going to do that when it gets underneath. Now I'm going to go back to my scarlet red and I'm just going to work this colour down a little bit and this one up a little bit through the whole flower and hopefully it will just give the effect of some texture in the petals. Maybe some shine as well. And work through. I do like poinsettias. I think I've said before, I can't, I just can't keep them alive so pretty so uh, I'm always tempted to get one I have to remind myself that I'm not very good at looking after them 
but I have actually had some success this year with house plants. Normally I just can't keep house plants going, but um, I have managed to. I've now got four house plants which I've managed to keep alive, which I'm quite proud of myself. I've got a Christmas cactus, and that I've had that for two years, so that's pretty cool. And uh, we're going to go in for some green now. And I'm going to start off, I think, with this green, which is the leaf green, but I need to sharpen it before I start. Um, I've also got a peace lily, which I've kept going for probably a year. And um, what else have I got? I've got a, I think it's an azalea, which really needs to go out into the garden, but I've kept that alive it's looking a little bit I'm not sure if it's too happy at the moment because it's sitting on top of a radiator well on a shelf that's above a radiator and I've also got a geranium which a friend gave to me and I've managed to look after that as well so I've impressed myself with my green fingeredness this um, lately but uh, normally people would give me lovely plants and I just couldn't wouldn't um, keep them alive and my husband used to joke that it was really lucky that the um, children could speak or else I would starve them but uh, or cry obviously babies but <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure that would have been the case hopefully not but, Anyway, I am just doing, I haven't sp told you what I'm doing, I'm just doing an even layer across all leaves. I'm going to use the same technique as I did with the other, um, with the petals, but with the leaves this time. So I'm going to use my permanent green olive, which is number 167, to do the under here where they shadow and the tips of the leaves. But this first leaf is a little different because we've got this folded over bit which I think would catch the light. So we'll put our darker green under there. Whereas with this one, we'll put our darker green at the tip, which we'll do for most of these. I really like this particular picture, but I find it quite tricky. There's a lot of white wall in it, which uh, which can be daunting. But uh, I've got an idea for what to do with the background. Um, actually, it's something I'll probably show you. Because um, because um, I think it might be useful. I've done some wood. I'm going to do a sort of wood panel, like a sort of oak panelling type style. And uh, I've done some in a previous picture and I know people wanted to know how I did it. And I do it quite simply with wood. I don't try and put knots and things like that in the wood. It looks gorgeous, but um, it's quite tricky, I think. I haven't really tried it, so I just keep it simple and just give an impression of wood in a more simplistic way. And I think it still works. So I will um, show you how I'm going to plan on doing that we we'll do this first and uh, I'll pop another video for that up at some point so I think that's all of them with a little bit of colour uh, I mean a little bit of dark and we're going to go back to the leaf green and just pull some dark colour in like we did with the petals to blend it in Hopefully it will work out in the same way and come together. Now we haven't done the centre of the flowers, I realise that. Now with poinsettia, I've studied them quite a lot over the years having coloured them. And I notice that in the centre there seem to be, it's almost like little buds ready for the new petals to come out. So you've got a green on the outside of the bud and as it sort of pops open you get a little yellow colour and some red so there's a lot of different colours going on so I tend to um, layer up some colours I tend to do a green 
um, background with a pencil and then go in I'm just going to do a little bit of darker there and there and then go in with a um, a pen and go over the top with some yellow and um, some red so I think I've shown you how to do that before but I shall show you again in case you missed that video there we go there's my leaves I'm going to leave them like that leave good joke okay eh? so the inside of the um, flowers I'm going to do in this colour which is earth green yellowish you'll have to take my word for it it's quite small and I'm just going to do a layer of this green you could do it the same as the leaves but I don't know why I always do it this green it's just me and then I'm going to get my yellow Posca and I'm going to do some dots to look like the little buds I'm just going to hold my page still. My page is jumping around all over the place. I don't know how well you can see. I find it quite difficult demonstrating pen because I have to keep it fairly upright and it means that I obscure your view. So you see I'm doing some dots but I'm not covering over all the green. And when to do the red I need to wait for that to dry. So in the meantime I'm going to try and straighten that up a little bit for you. Sorry about that. And do the pot. Now, the pot has a candle in front of it, which will be casting some light across this little bit here. Um, for me, that is a bit complex, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to ignore it or do something about it. Mm. And what I'm going to do is in the pot, I'm going to bring in the darker colours that we used on the leaves. So this is the um, dark red and I'm going to use this for this main part of the pot. I'm going to do a green stripe and red here and here and the reason for that is because we've got all this green here it contrasts. If I did this green as well it would be lost. So I'm going to do a light layer of this red to start with. I may bring in some of the other red later. I haven't decided yet. Just and the same underneath and what I want to do with this pot is to try and show that it is rounded now obviously it's drawn it's flat it's two-dimensional but we can shade it so hopefully it looks a bit more round and what would happen with a rounded pot if it came out like this is that the light would catch on the bit that was sticking out more although we've got this candle which is going to slightly confuse us so I think it's going to be darker on the edge then lighter towards the middle and we've also got some shadow under these leaves which we'll have to think about in a minute but let's just get these edges done and see if the effect works so you can see I'm layering up the color and trying to keep it lighter in the middle and lots more heavier layers on the outside. We're going to do the same down here. So we've got a dark layer down here and then it will lighten up towards the middle of the pot. I tend to do each side a bit at a time so it's easier for me to find the centre. So I just pull each side in by a little bit a little bit more till we sort of reach the middle where we want to leave it with some it's not white because we've colored over it all but it's lighter and the same here so bring that in just a bit more and a bit more obviously we want these to line up now I think that could be a little bit darker now under here we've got some shadow. I'm actually going to use a different colour for that. I like using my dark sepia for shadows. So this is number 175. Gosh, you're really squiffy, aren't we? Sorry. Oh, it's my I, the tripod is in the way. I'm really sorry. We're going to have to do it like this. And I'm just going to bring in a little layer under here. 
just to look like some shadow is being cast under those leaves. I'm sorry, I just can't get it looking straight for you. And then we're going to do this green stripe across here. And we're going to use the same principle as we did for the red. So start off with a light layer and then get some dark down here and fade it out towards the centre. We can see where the centre is now from where we've done the red. It needs to be in the same place as that. So we don't need to do one side and then the other side. There we go. Now I feel this here doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to go back in with this red and just take that in a bit. That's it. I'm just going to exaggerate that dark part on those edges again. A little bit more. That's it. Because the more, the darker you have some areas, the more the light bit shows up. Now, the candle, I'm just thinking if it maybe it would just cast a little bit of yellow light here so I think we could just put a little bit of yellow on there it's not going to show up though on the top and uh, I can't see in my camera it's too low down I make it look like the candle is just shining a bit on there it's not really going to show on top the red. Some pencils lay on top of each other better. This one doesn't. Um, I think I might just cheat and grab my Caran d'Ache white and just pop a little bit on top. And that does work. I can see that even if you can't. So there we go. I'm going to just leave it there because I end up fiddling and faddling with it. But there's our potted poinsettia flower. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.